is coming my way Wherever I go, hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way For today's Grim Adventure, we find ourselves in Hartsdale, New York, visiting the Fern Cliff Cemetery and Mausoleum, and there are a lot of famous people buried here. Joan Crawford, Malcolm X, Cab Calloway, but we are here for somebody who is one in a million, for somebody who truly is the queen of the damned. Aaliyah. The plane crash that killed a rising star in the world of music and film. Reaction today after Aaliyah and eight others were killed when their plane went down. Good evening, I'm Lauren Glassbergen for Sandra Bookman. And I'm Tim Fleischer. The plane, just after taking off for Florida in perfect weather, suddenly plummeted to the ground. Investigators now saying one of the engines apparently failed. Along with eight passengers, Aaliyah, a young Brooklyn native and a talented singer and actress. Jeff Rossin is live in Times Square with more on her life. Jeff. And Aaliyah had a huge following, not only here in New York City, but nationwide. Only 22 years old, this pop sensation uh, was a popular singer. She was an actress in some movies recently, even a Grammy nominee. Tonight, her family is in mourning, fans asking, why her? Aaliyah's hits include Back and Forth and At Your Best. She acted in the movie Romeo Must Die and was slated to appear in sequels Bye. to The Matrix. But her life, her dreams, were taken away. On board the Doom Cessna, Aaliyah and eight others, including a representative for Virgin Records and a makeup artist. Investigators say one of the engines apparently failed. They crashed just short of a runway on Abaco Island. Aaliyah's final resting place is down here at the far end of the hall on the left hand side and you know what this is a very beautiful mausoleum now when it comes to Aaliyah I don't really know much about her career except for two things the first one being the song that she she sang was a uh, one in a million and the other one being a movie that both Jessica and I love known as Queen of the Damned I am Akasha the Queen of the Damned <laughs> Her spot is right up here. Oh wow, this is nice. Aaliyah, baby girl, 1979, died 2001. I didn't realize this, but you know, I was born in 79, so we would have been the same age. So I mentioned the song, One in a Million, and the movie Queen of the Damned. Mm -hmm. When you think of Aaliyah, what, what do you remember? Like talk, talk about some of your memories with her or of her. Gosh, so when I remember Aaliyah, without having to look anything up, just from my memory, she's not much older than me and she started in her career very young, I remember that. So throughout my teenage years, she was having hits after hits after hits. For me, I saw her in so many music videos, um, I saw her everywhere, on merchandise, in the CD store, on t-shirts, and then she did the movie Romeo Must Die, and that was a really big deal. She did um, an action film with Jet Li. And what I didn't know at the time, that I do know now as an adult, is that that was her very first motion picture, I believe? And it was an action film, and I would never 
thought that she had done that for the first time in her life. Like, she was very, very good. Um, she was like a natural performer. She was a natural, and that's why people loved her so much is that she was such a sweet soul and so compassionate, and she really was a, a big figure in young girls' lives. Try not to be a little emotional because the music is really hitting. Uh, <laughs> just, it, it devastated everyone when we lost her. Now let him point this out. You see how her stone says Aaliyah and right above him it says Michael Miguel Houghton, H-A-U-G-H-T-O-N. It's actually her last name. So that above her is her father. I remember hearing that the cause of death was a plane crash and that the plane had been overloaded. I went on to the Wikipedia to confirm this and it did say they later determined the plane was about 700 pounds over its maximum and that it had crashed roughly 200 feet after takeoff and had caught fire instantly upon crash. Just a quick stop to visit Aaliyah. From here, we're gonna head down to Manhattan and take a look at where she lived, the condo, the building, as well as her funeral. Whenever she died, a lot of her friends and family came out and it was a very beautiful service. Afterwards, whenever they left the church, they, they put Aaliyah's coffin inside a horse-drawn carriage that was white and they drove through the streets or rode through the streets of the city. I'm gonna tell you right now, there is no way we're getting up here inside this building. But 25 Central Park West, which is the Century Building, is where Aaliyah was living. This is where her condo was at the time of her death. Even though we can't get inside and see the condo with our own two eyes, you can actually look online and see what it looks like now. After her death, her condo has actually changed hands a couple different times. There's a real estate listings for it. We can't stand here too long, really just enough to kind of get a shot of the building and mention that this is where she was living. There are no pictures or any kind of video that I know of that we can line up, so that's okay. Where we're going next is the church where her funeral was. Right now we're walking up to the church where Aaliyah's funeral was held. A place known as St. Ignatius Loyola. I think it's a Roman Catholic church. I'm gonna walk a couple blocks after we park, but it's a beautiful little place. The ceremony was absolutely stunning. After the service, they put Aaliyah's coffin in a horse-drawn carriage, a white horse-drawn carriage, and they rode through the streets of New York. When we get up here to the church, we're gonna line up some things and talk about the service. But Aaliyah was 22 years old, and after the service, when everybody was leaving the church, they released 22 white doves into the air, one for each year that she was alive. Now, she was loved by many, and pretty much anybody and everybody who was a part of the hip hop and R.A.B. Uh, community was here for the service. Like, everybody was here. Among the mourners joining Aliyah's grief-stricken parents, her aunt, Gladys Knight, Aliyah's boyfriend, Damon Dash, fellow hip hop honcho, Sean Puppy Combs, R&B singers, Usher, Maya and Monica, hip-hop artist Jay-Z, Busta Rhymes, Lil' Kim, Missy, even former heavyweight champ Mike Tyson. Right now we're waiting for the light to change so we can walk across the street safely. But that building right there, that's a church. That's where Aaliyah's funeral was held. All right, let's go ahead and walk over to the median. It's a beautiful building. We're gonna go ask and see if they'll let us take the cameras inside so we can see what it looks like. 
I bet it's beautiful. Now you were saying that they do live streaming. Like there's a sign on the building that talks about live streaming. So they might be cool with it. In fact, this door right here where her coffin came out. Now this is beyond beautiful. Right now I'm, I'm kind of whispering because we're the only people that are in here. And it's so peaceful. Aaliyah's service would have been held right here. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another Grim Adventure, this time in New York City. Only a couple of different places, but we ended up here in New York City telling the story of Aaliyah. We visited her grave, where she lived, where her funeral took place, right behind us. Till next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my way.